Hey, this is Jonathan Mukara for Fluency Plus Plus. Do you have to face bad code, at least from time to time? Chances are you do. Most developers have to face bad code in their daily work. Bad code can be frustrating, can be hard to deal with. So today I'm going to show you how to use bad code to learn how to write great code. So, how can we use bad code to learn how to write really great code? I'm going to show you how to do that in three specific ways. The first one is that when you encounter a piece of bad code or a bad interface, the natural reaction to that is to say something like, wow, this looks like crap, or who wrote that, or this doesn't make sense. So that's the natural way to, to go. Once you've gone past that first reaction, there's one more thing that you can do and that's much more useful. It is finding exactly why you don't like that piece of code. And when you try and do that, you see that it's not that easy to formalize exactly what is wrong in a piece of code or in an interface. But if you make the effort to, to do that, you're going to be rewarded because you're going to see what one should pay attention to when writing code. And this piece of code got it wrong, but you can get it right because you identify where you should be careful. So my first piece of advice is when you encounter a bad piece of code, then Think hard and formalize why you don't like it and why it makes it bad. The second thing is that if you do refactor that piece of code or if you change that interface and make it better, then the thing we all want to do when we reach that point is shove this task down to the done column of our board. Before you do that, I want you to do one last thing. I want you to look back at what you did and try to understand why exactly you made that piece better. Sometimes we know a piece of code is better than it was before because it, it looks better, right? It, it's more pleasant to the eye. But sometimes it's really hard to really pinpoint exactly what made this piece of code better. Once you do that, these two things, you're going to be much more efficient. How does that work? I think there's a good analogy with a vaccine. You know how a vaccine works? Vac to, do, to do a vaccine, you take a, bit of, a little bit of the disease into your body and then your body analyzes it. Then it bits it because it's small and then it remembers. And the next time your body is encountering this particular disease, it's going to smash it apart in no time. I think the same goes with code. I'm comparing here the disease with bad code. When you encounter bad code, if you make the effort to analyze it, and then once you've beaten it, understand why and remember this particular technique, the next time you're going to meet, you're going to encounter a piece of code that looks about, that looks about the same, you're going to smash it apart in no time. Now, the third thing I would advise you to do is do not just read bad code. Reading bad code is useful for the two reasons we've seen before, but if you only see bad code, then you're going to remain within the same bad patterns and you're going to repeat these patterns because you won't have a better model. This is the reason why I would strongly advise you to read good code. Reading good code is helpful because your mind, when it reads it, takes a subconscious part of this good code and brings it back with it. So the next time you see bad code, then you're going to 
recognize what, why it's different. It's, it's more going to be a matter of feeling, you're going you're gonna to sense why this code is bad and, and you're going to see those smells, which is the, the right expression. It's a code smell we're talking about. Now, where can you see good codes, in particular in C++? Well, I've made a video that shows exactly where you can go out and look at great code and great interfaces where you could take inspiration from. So you can go check out that video. So in summary, I'd advise you to read great code as much as you can so that you get a feel of what good code looks like. And then when you face this bad code, you're going to recognize it, analyze it, Try and formalize what's wrong in a piece of code you don't like. And if you do fix it, then think back at what you did and extract a gen generic technique that you can reuse for future pieces of bad code that you meet. I'm going to leave you with this analogy. You know, when we encounter a really bad piece of code, something that really looks disgusting, sometimes we call it shit code. Pardon my French. Well. I don't want you to just remain near it and suffer because of it. What I want you to do is use it, turn it into compost and with it thrive in your learning and in your understanding of great code. If you want more videos like this one, subscribe to the channel and if you liked it, put a thumb up. See you next time.